Welcome one and welcome all. You're watching Orchids for Dummies and this is Foul Pal Durrell. In today's video, I will be giving you guys a step-by-step -step tutorial how to repot your Phalaenopsis Orchid. If you are new to this channel, please subscribe and stay tuned. Welcome back, Foul Pals. I thought because it's a rainy day, it's a laid back day. So let's take our time going one by one explaining why we are using the things that we are using in repotting this Phalaenopsis orchid. If you guys can remember, last year I came out with various videos testing different types of media, different types of pots, and different types of setups, okay? So this is the conclusion to all of those videos. I am choosing this ventilated pot because it works best with using sphagnum moss. I like to have a top layer of sphagnum moss on all of my orchids. It just keeps that humidity up and it also produces good area roots. It's greatly ventilated at the, bot at the bottom of the pot, but it's not so big to where the bark or the media would fall completely through. As you can see, it also have that suction cup that helps with that compacted moss or compacted media at the bottom that would drown the roots. It helps with making sure the bottom of your pot does not stay soggy and wet, okay? As you can see, I have two different size pots, okay? Now, we were talking about the overpotting of pots. You don't want to overpot your Phalaenopsis orchid. So typically you want to go up just one inch, okay? And you also want to make sure you're taking into consideration the amount of roots that your orchid has to offer. Now, the next thing I am going to show you guys and talk to you guys about, and you can get all of this from Amazon. The next thing that we're talking about is New Zealand sphagnum moss okay it's by best grow and they have the best sphagnum moss it smells great it looks great and it maintains water and a good ph for our orchids but knowing that with sphagnum moss a little dab will do you and keep in mind this is not peat moss so it's not full of sticks and debris okay it's very light and fluffy very light and fluffy and it will actually turn green for you. So that's why I love this the most. So this is New Zealand sphagnum moss that I like to use as a top layer, okay, on all of my orchids. Stay tuned. So next up on the list is going to be Orchiata. Orchiata bark is also by New Zealand. Now it is very water retentive. So that's why so many people love Orchiata. It also is advertised to be very long lasting, okay? Now, this is why I chose to use this because this is what everyone was raving about at my Orchid Society. And I tested it for myself and I do agree that this is the type of bark that I am able to use. And if I am able to use it, new beginners, so can you, so can you, foul pals. Now, stay tuned. Can you stand the rain? Sunny days, everybody knows them. Tell me, baby, can you stand the rain? Yes, uh, you know I like to get in good spirits and get to singing and stuff. Well, Fail Pals, this is going to be Paralyte, okay? And what this is for, it helps with drainage. It helps with that compacted moss and compacted media at the bottom of your pot. If you don't have this to put at the bottom of your pot, this is what we call packaging peanuts, okay? You can break these up and put them at the bottom of your pot as well. Make sure that it's not the plastic kind, okay? Now, stay tuned. We're going to talk about what you should do to your bar. Thank you so much for staying tuned. Now, below what I have are the things that you would need to successfully repot your Phalaenopsis orchid. 
New beginners, remember, I'm doing my best to break it all the way down. So, this is bark that you want to pre-soak overnight or you want to flush with boiling hot water because bark fresh out of the pack is not going to it's not going to um, retain that water adequately. So you want to go ahead and make sure that your bark is already pre-soaked. You also have hydrogen peroxide because we might have to cut some roots. And hydrogen peroxide would kill any um, antigens, any fungi, anything that would harm your Phalaenopsis orchid. I have in some alcohol a pair of shears and a pair of tweezers to pull off all of that dead matter. Okay, I also have a tray to perform this open heart surgery on with a pair of gardening gloves. Now, stay tuned. Okay, fail pals. So, shall we take a looksy looksy into this pot? A lot of you guys would get um, what we call rescue phalaenopsis, meaning that you are getting orchids or phalaenopsis orchids that are not in the best best conditions. You are practicing on how to revive a phalaenopsis orchid. And you also just have a big heart and hate to see a phalaenopsis left in the store being mistreated and such. Not here on Orchids for Dummies. We're going to save that baby. So, as you can see, these roots are not the best looking roots at all, Fal Pals. They are not. But you never know. You never know. Especially when you have a orchid in this type of setup. All it's waiting for is a new repot to start growing those new roots. Now, also, keep in mind to um, soak your media. Um, I thought that I had soaked this pretty good, but... It, it didn't soak good at all. Also, keep in mind, Fal Pals, anytime you have a Phalaenopsis orchid that starts to wiggle and um, almost fall out of the pot when you get to watering it, that's an orchid, that's an indication that it needs a repot. Now, Fal Pals, I did the pH test strips on this, and it came out to be um, very acidic. And it's very acidic because even though this is um, fresh moss, okay, on the outside, all you have is decaying media. Um, well, not media, but you have decaying matter. And that is going to raise the pH in your pot. And if it raises the pH in your pot, that's going to make your nutrients not be absorbed when you water your Phalaenopsis orchids. Please. Um, have mercy on me, foul pals. My tripod is broken and I have no one to hold it. So please, honey, keep me lifted in prayer and be patient with me. So I'm not seeing any good roots. So um, in this event, when you don't see any roots, foul pals, what I like to do is start Start it on water culture. Starting it on water culture will help um, promote those new roots as well. But I like to start growing roots before I actually do a repot if the orchid is sick. Because if I do that, the roots that are going that are now growing, okay, from doing the water culture, they are going to adapt to the type of media that I have it in. Now, if I am to place it in complete bark, I would have to use a lot of sphagnum moss because that sphagnum moss is what is going to encourage new root production. So this is what I am left with, Fal Pals. As you can see, they are very black. They are um, um, not in the best of health at all. But we have been reviving Phalaenopsis orchids here on Orchids for Dummies with all of these beautiful leaves. I'll have this orchid on its feet in no time. Stay tuned. Again, thanks for staying tuned. So, Fal Pals, as it was determined, um, this Phalaenopsis over here, 
um, because I thought it had more roots than this. If you guys have not seen how to start water culture on an orchid, I will leave a video link above. So we are not going to be um, repetitious, not at orchids for dummies. So I will leave a video link above. And these are orchids that are ready to be potted up. This orchid right here was already potted. I made a mistake and dropped it, knocked it completely over, and it was already over potted because Amazon took forever, forever and ever to send me this size pots. They had only sent me the big kind, which was not what I needed. And this is a mini Phalaenopsis orchid that I had growing in water culture only because I did not have media and, um, I didn't have media or pots. So we're gonna pot these two up today. You will get to see that here on Orchids for Dummies. So stay tuned. Boy, I tell you, you guys are really something special. Really something special. So I have my sphagnum moss over here in some rainwater soaking because it takes a minute for um, sphagnum moss to, <laughs> you know, absorb the water fresh out of the package as well. So in the meantime, we are going to go ahead and examine our Phalaenopsis orchid. Now, Fal Pals, um, I will be doing some trimming of this root and this root. These roots right here are hard, so they are going to be just fine. Cut it as close to the base as possible without cutting the base off. Okay. Removing um, the old flower stalk if possible. That's why I said you guys need shears. Mm. So now what I'm going to do is spray it with hydrogen peroxide and then I'm gonna pull that dead matter off. Stay tuned. Okay, here we go. Um, hydrogen peroxide would not hurt your Phalaenopsis orchid. Okay, new beginners. What it does is just acts as a fungicide, okay? making sure that we are not putting fungi and bacteria that is um, unwanted into our new pot. Now, as you can see, it's not a lot of um, dead matter to come off because she had already gone, th gone through this process when I repotted her the first time, okay? These area roots right here, they are going to be left out of the pot and not inside of the pot. So new beginners, make sure that your area roots, you're not potting them up because if they are used, if they are accustomed to growing out of the pot, then that's how you want to leave them. Now, I have a foul pal that taught me a trick with how to anchor the phalaenopsis inside of the pot with a um, wire hanger, but that's a whole different video. That's a whole different video, okay? So now what we are going to do is um, get some of that Paralyte and put at the bottom of the pot, and then I'm gonna put my secret recipe at the bottom. But you gotta stay tuned.